working in progress. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Ladies GOTV, which stands for Get Out the Vote. And I just want to say before we go into this call that you cannot keep good women down. That's for sure. All right. Our first Zoom call was sabotaged by some evildoers, and we were able to regroup with, uh, but with the help of Miss Candy. We appreciate you, Candy. And so we are going to, we are now uh, uh, recording this Zoom session for our show tonight. And then you'll get, we'll, we'll share it out to you all and uh, put it on YouTube and all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and kick it off. My name is V Richardson. I am a 25-year uh, resident of Loudoun County, Virginia. I am a former member of the Leesburg Town Council first Black woman ever to sit on the council. And this is our uh, show, which was initially created by our co-host, Mary Hayes, who I will call up next. And then we will uh, introduce our esteemed, wonderful, uh, dynamic guests that we have today. Mary? Can you hear me? Go, Mary. Okay. Hi, I'm Mary Hayes, and I am the founder of Women Against Project 2025, and um, we've been doing this since, what, 2019, 2020, um, and we're back to do it again for the same reasons that we can't allow um, 45 to get back in the White House uh, with his bag of tricks. So um, that's, an, I don't need to really tell you too much more about me. Um, that's the purpose. And um, that's what we're here to do and to provide you with information and the tools so that you're comfortable in going out and speaking truth to lies. Absolutely. Thank you, Mary. Um... Next up is Jamie Neidig. Jamie. Hi, I'm Jamie Neidig. I am currently a resident of the beautiful Pacific Northwest. I was a resident of Loudoun County for many, many years and have been an activist for many more. You can check out my Madam President t-shirt, which is our goal to, can, to stay the course and continue the democratic agenda and preserve the democracy. Um, so I'm very happy to be here with you today. I'm a professional workforce strategist, so I would be very happy to talk about um, at the impact of what Project 2025 would do to the workforce overall, as well as, I mean, that's the bad side, but let's also at some point take some time, not this, this show, but talk about the really great things that the Biden-Harris administration has done for the United States workforce and for our economy and how staying the course will be good for the American people. Thank you, Jamie. Last but not least, Soraya Hayes. Soraya, go ahead and introduce yourself to the people. Hi. Uh, uh, my name is Soraya. Um, I'm just here to set the record straight. Um, also um, add a little bit of Gen Z um, ideas in there and kind of let you all know generally speaking, where where our head is at and where we're going. Thank you, Soraya. Um, absent is our uh, co-hostess, Kimberly uh, Newman, who is currently on the road driving to Miami. So she may or may not pop in. Um, before we introduce our esteemed guests, I just want to say that um, I've been in politics since I was 16 years old. I'm now in my 50s and I'm exhausted. So uh, speaking for my own, speaking for myself, we are doing this for Soraya and her generation. So they do not have to go through the pitfalls that we have gone through and deal with the kind of misogyny and racism and ze uh, xenophobia and all the isms that we are going through now. Hopefully they will be able to make a big change and affect change going forward. So let's move on. I'd like to introduce uh, 
one of our, uh, the first of our two guests, Miss Barb Jones. So let me tell a quick story about Barb. So back in uh, 2017, before I ran for office, uh, I got a call from someone at work. I got a call from someone in Leesburg. I was at work and they said, V, you got to get to Leesburg right away. And I said, what's going on? They said, Trump dispatched one of his cronies to your kid's elementary school. Yeah. And I was like, why would he do that? He said he wants to get rid of Michelle Obama's food triangle. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? They said, yeah, he wants to give the kids uh, crappy food and chocolate milk so that they'll pay attention better. I was like, okay. I went into my manager's office and said, I'm sick. I got to go home. And I left. By the time I got to Leesburg in front of my kids' elementary school, there was Barb Jones, there was Kristen Amstad, there was Mayor Kelly Burke, there were Marty Martinez, there were a bunch of us standing in front of the uh, elementary school protesting what was going on inside that school. And not only did they just barrel their way into the county, but they did not ask for permission from the parents to talk to the kids or have the kids photographed. So that was already two violations. That day I met Barb Jones on the street <laughs> and we have been connected ever since. She's phenomenal. Barb, go ahead and introduce yourself to the people. Hey, you've got a good memory. We've done so much now. It's hard to remember all the things, but thank you. And I'm glad I could be there. My name's Barb Jones. Um, I consider myself an organizer. I consider myself a networker. What I want to do today is to help anyone on this call, any questions, whatever information I have, I want to elevate you and make you move as fast as we can. I have a background as um, an activist, an advocate, I've been a field organizer. I've worked on many campaigns. I've actually worked as a chief of staff and I've been an activist director. And um, it's my honor to be here today. I'm really grateful for all of you starting this and getting the ball rolling and, and making it happen. Thank you. You're welcome, Barb. Thank you. And last but not least, our next speaker, her name is Candy. And guess what? We met Candy early this morning. And she was so fabulous. And I was so impressed with her and what her and her team are doing under the banner of Politically Connect. And when she told me the name of her company, I nearly screamed my head off because I was like, oh my God, somebody actually did what I've been thinking about for 25 years. So I love it. Candy, go ahead and introduce yourself to the people. Hi there. Well, I um, am a pretty much lifelong resident of Loudoun County and product of Loudoun County Public Schools, um, as is my husband. And we are raising our three kids here in Loudoun. And I think, um, you know, my most important title is mom. And so I'm really motivated to um, make things better and make sure that my kids don't have fewer rights than I grew up with. And that's what drives me. Um, and so I grew up seeing folks like Barb in the community back when Loudoun County, uh, where it was very red and it was not popular to be a Democrat, getting out there and uh, working for school board candidates and local candidates and really um, modeling what it looks like to be a, a busy professional woman and mom um, creating change in their community. So my career background is in corporate social media. And so I first as a volunteer and then as a career have been helping candidates and campaigns with their social media now for quite a long time. And uh, along with my business partner, Lauren Owensby, started Politically Connect. And what we do is we educate candidates, campaigns, organizations about how social media can really build a community that can then be offline and can create change. And so I'm really excited tonight to talk about how everybody watching can use social media as a tool um, and that you 
know, it doesn't have to be something scary. It doesn't have to be just a place where people fight. It's a really powerful organizing tool, as we've seen since Kamala Harris, Harris came on the top of the ticket and very quickly, uh, you know, saw how her messaging and branding spread across social media. And we can all sort of have a little piece of that. And I'm excited to talk about that tonight. Awesome. Thank you so much. So how I think we should conduct this wonderful call is for, um, let's start with Barb and ask her to talk about, um, Barb, you had a, no, Barb, you actually had an agenda, right? You had some things you wanted to talk about in specific. So I let's go ahead and talk about your items and then we'll switch over the candy. And then maybe we can uh, hold a mini Q&A amongst these folks uh, right before we end up, okay? That sounds ideal. So some of the feedback that I, you know, how I got up at four o'clock this morning and it was based on a conversation with Mary. You've started this national group and people want, actions immediately. They want to get going. So we need to fill that needs and also spoke with Candy. You know, how do you jump in? This is from the perspective. How do you jump into the political arena in your local community and, and be successful? So I want to help smooth the path. So that is the perspective that it's from. So basically, I, I basically woke up at four and I said, well, when you wake up and you want to save democracy, where do you start? Who do you start with? So the first thing you do is don't stress. First of all, when we take an action that will, whatever action that is, it will increase hope and it will increase change. And the action doesn't have to be huge. So we're going to talk about some of those actions now. And the first thing I would ask everyone on this call who watches is take stock of your gifts. What are the things that you really do well that you could contribute to the campaign? Like Candy talks about her social media. I was talking about, I like to talk to strangers. I don't have any problem going up to people, whether they like it or not, unfortunately. But um, Soraya, she might have different gifts. She loves, you know, TikTok videos. I don't know. I don't know what her gifts are. But whatever those gifts, that's where you start. Um, you don't have to fall into a narrow, like, shoot how to do things. Do what you love and, and incorporate it with this. The other thing is you have to have a growth mindset. Candy was talking to me. How do we incorporate mindset and wellness in this? Because this is going to be a marathon. They're going to be throwing things at us. We're going to have competing competing tasks coming at us um, on unknown circumstances like, like what we just juggled, right? How do we stay calm and move forward? And so part of that is, um, you know, when we grow, I was listening to a book, 100 Changes You Can Make to, to, to Do Better, um, Little Changes. And one of them was um, that when we get these dopamine hits, you get dopamine hits every time you scroll, right? You can also balance your dopamine. I know I'm getting off the track, but I was thinking of candy. You can mellow your dopamine hits by doing something challenging. This work is gonna, is gonna help you to grow and it's gonna help, help you um, even out those. It's gonna be a little scary, but you can do it. Um, so the first place you start to be an organizer is right with your friends and family. You start up and you say, Okay, I want to do this. Who do I trust? Who do I know that will welcome me and, and I can move forward with them, that we can move forward together? Um, like, like Soraya being in this room with her mother. How fabulous is that, right? Um, two, two, so generation, wanted, two generations working together, doing the same things. That's fabulous. So you start with those people and that's where the, our nucleus is. I was on a higher heights call this week, black women organizing, and that's what they talked about. They said, you start and solidify the groups around you. You talk to them about project 2025. You talk to the, talk with them and listen about who Kamala Harris is. 
and you work from there, but you work from your friends, your church, your sorority sisters. Unfortunately, I don't have any, but I wish I did. Um, and your groups. So that's where you start the nucleus, right? So you got that group. And if you know somebody, you know, maybe you know a politician, maybe you know a local leader, go to them and ask them to work with you. So super easy. We're just going to start. And I know this sounds really basic, but I want it to be an easy path for everyone. Our efforts, all of our efforts, whatever we do, different ways, we're going to get out the vote. That's our whole, that's the whole thing that we're trying to do. We're trying to win, you know, the swing states. We're trying to increase the blue areas so we can flip states and keep states. So it's all about getting out the vote. Um, this year, we have an initiative that we're strategically driving. It is called Vote Day One of Early Voting in Person. I know that's a lot there. So we are blessed to have 45 days of early voting in Virginia. Many of the states have early voting. They might not call it that. And there's only two that don't, just so you know. Uh, I found a list, but it doesn't have the exact dates. And I commit to all of you, I'm going to get all the dates and I'm going to research them and share them with the group. So people will know um, when early voting is. So why is this important? Why, why is this a strategic move that we're going to, that we're all going to work towards? If we can cast our precious vote on the first day with a ballot, it's auto automatically fed in and counted, okay? Um, if we do this on that day, we never know what's going to happen those next 45 days. We don't know about our health. We don't know about our weather. We don't know what maybe the opposition might do. We don't know. So when we can vote early, let's go do it. Why this is strategic is that it's going to take this large universe of voting population. It's going to pull all of us out. And so for the campaigns, they're going to have a smaller universe to target. How fabulous would it be if we have a sneak attack and win on day one of early voting? That's my sneak attack. And it's just getting people to vote on at early voting. Why I recommend um, voting in person with a ballot is because sometimes absentee ballots, you can make a mistake. And um, you all probably know this. The campaigns have to go chase those ballots and we might need those votes. So it's important if you can go and cast it in person, please do that. So th that's our big strategy. And in Virginia, where we live, that date is Friday, September 20th. And um, we're gonna have parties throughout, throughout Loudoun County, go vote. And then you can go to the Mexican restaurant like we did last year. I think the Indian community is gonna have a fabulous party. Everybody celebrate voting and get out, get out early. What other things can we do? So it's about voter engagement. And I'm gonna ta start talking about, you know, stepping out of our comfort zones because for a lot of people it's not something they're comfortable to talk talk to a stranger so we've talked to our family we've talked to our friends we've made a plan that we're all going to go vote early but now we're going to step out of that comfort zone so throughout your day i'm going to give you this little assignment to dip your feet in the water when you go to get your Dunkin' Donuts yeah i go to Dunkin' Donuts yeah that's my favorite i'm not a Starbucks girl um, talk like yesterday, I, you know, a nice young man was getting my, my beverage and I said, Hey, are you registered to vote? Are you? And he said, you know, I'm old enough, but I haven't registered. I said, I can help you with that. And you can look up on your phone. You just put Virginia elections and I shared it with him. That's all it took. Just that one little question. The other one that you could break out is, have you heard of Project 2025? And just start a conversation. I know it's uncomfortable, but this is how we're gonna build power and we're gonna move, we're gonna move. 
and you never know that person might come along with us. So, and I, and I welcome, you know, everybody to share if they have other ideas as well. Um, and there's a website and I'm going to share all of these. It's called um, IWillVote.com. When you're with anyone, you can take that link and give it to them. They can look up their state and um, we can share these in the recording. So there you have it. You just became an organizer by talking to that person. Boom, you're an organizer. I know. Isn't that fabulous? That's all it takes. It's stuff you do every day. Um, and you just focus it in on these questions. And, and basically what you're doing is talking to them, to people and listening to hear what they care about. Connect at the heart and tell them, you know, why this is so important to me. You don't have to speak in the terms of the candidate. You just say, I'm like what Jamie was talking about. I know about the workforce and this is important to me. Boom. And people will trust you. People will trust you. Your friends will trust you. You're, trust, you're a trusted messenger. The other thing that we do, it sounds kind of silly, but I've got my little, it's up to us button. I don't know if you can see, it. it's kind of weird. Anyway, and then the, another, I just have this t-shirt. I made my own t-shirt. I'm that fancy. It doesn't have to be purchased or anything. You know, I like to do this. This is what gives me peace at night when, I'm worrying instead of watching one of those shows that are telling me ups and downs and who's doing what, I do some crafts that I can hand to people so I can engage with them. So literally, um, if you would wear a button, wear a t-shirt with what you care about, people will notice you. They might not talk to you, but they'll see what you care about. And if you have more than one button and you see someone looking at you, I've given people many more buttons than I've kept. And it's kind of like Girl Scouts trading, trading buttons. It, it gives you a connection in that moment, an easy connection. So buttons, t-shirts, baseball caps, all positive things that can help you on your way to be an organizer. Um, how do we take, where do we go to find these actions? So that's been coming up a lot people that have never been politically active. Uh, the first place to go is look in your county for your democratic organization. We have Loudoun County Dems. You can look in there and see what they're doing. How can I get involved? I know this month they have meetings. They talk about Project 2025. They're having postcard events. So these are things that are already set up. I don't have to do anything but walk in the room and listen. And maybe and the cool thing is, I know I sound 65, right? The cool thing is you'll meet people with shared values that you'll be safe with. You'll be safe with them. You're in a safe space. So that's where I would start first. And then I would go on to um, look at, check out grassroots organizations. I am part of a, a group called Network Nova that um, in 20. 17, eight women, I was one of them, got together. We didn't know each other. We met at a Panera off of Facebook and we created a women's summit in 60 days where 330 women came to become organizers, to be trained. We were scared. Trump had just gotten elected, but we were gonna do everything that we could. And guess what? All those women got together and we flipped 15 seats. The Democratic Party thought we could only do four. So this is how I know from that experience, we can flip the United States if we all unify and give our gifts to one another. Unfortunately, one of those seats, Shelly Simons was one vote and they flipped a coin and she lost. So we lost the majority. So vote, votes are very, voting is very important. If you ever want to talk to anybody with that. Um, there's another group, Grassroots, Grass, Virginia Grassroots, Network Nova. All of these places have events you can sign up for. You can see what's happening in all the different states. You From postcarding to texting to phone banking, canvassing, 
donating money. You can find places to do your work. Um, some of, One of the actions, an easy entry point into this work is to go, attend a post postcard party. So these um, we can you can set up, you can reach out to me, but there's there's groups that are set up to do that. And it's called Postcards to Swing States. They will give you the list. They will send you the postcards and they will, you will pick out the state you wanna do work in. You can do it in your own community. You could do your own. You'd go to your campaign headquarters, which you found out through the Democratic Party, where it is, um, where their office is, and they will give you a list and you can send, bring your friends together and write postcards. Um, please, something like, please Candy, I know you're a voter, join me in voting this year for Kamala Harris. Please be a voter, go to early voting with me, okay? Barb, and you send it out. Um, other groups that you can go to, Center for Common Ground, which is a fabulous organization in Virginia, it reaches out to uh, marginalized communities. The woman that is over this is Andrea Miller. She targets marginalized communities. So a lot of times campaigns don't expand their universe who they're gonna get. Andrea Miller gets those people, the people like us, all of us, right? So she has done this work for years in North Carolina, in Virginia. So there, that's a really cool place to do it. Moms Rising is another group that has postcards. You can get 20 postcards. They'll provide the stamps and the postcards and the names. And of course, Network Nova has postcards for VA. They'll give you um, not the stamps. You have to buy the postcards, but you'll get the list. You can also phone bank through different organizations, texts, text also if you like to do that, and then donate. So here's a fact. Women don't donate in the ways, the same, same levels as men. So if we can just all start giving just a little bit, maybe $5 or maybe $3, whatever it is, that's really going to help a candidate. Um, and that money early for future elections, like right now you saw the, the historic amounts of money are people are first time donors are giving right now. This symbolizes success to the campaign. It tells the opposition you're in trouble because there's an army behind those $5 contributions. They're going to vote too. And so it's it, that's an exciting little strategic move as well. All right, here's the tough one in the room. We're all going to have to put our big girl pants on we're gonna talk, what word am I gonna say? What word am I gonna say right now? Does anybody have an idea? Canvas, knocking on doors, doing that thing, going up to somebody's door and knocking on it. This is when we gotta get out of our comfort zone, but this is when I call my friends, I'm gonna invite Candy if I haven't done it before, I'm gonna invite V and I'm gonna say, okay, we're doing this thing, never done it but we're gonna do it together. So you'll go to the campaign office. You're gonna get a list of voters. They're gonna have different lists. The easiest time to do it is get out the vote two weekends before. Everything, they're all Democrats, they're all Dems. We just gotta knock on those doors and say, get out and vote. Um, but if you wanna go earlier, it's a little tougher, but here's some things to know. You don't have to be an experienced canvasser, okay? You're gonna go with your friends. The campaign is gonna conduct training. You're gonna have a script. You don't have to say the exact script. I speak from my heart, what's important to me. And I'm looking at the person there, why I'm doing this out in 100 degree weather, knocking on their door, asking them to join me for this campaign. Okay, they're going to teach you, they're going to train you. Here's the big thing. Eight out of 10 doors, nobody answers the door. Right, Vanessa? So you're just going to be dropping lit. So don't be afraid of it. Um, and, you know, get in that uncomfortable zone. That is where democracy happens at the doors.
So, and or phones, but the canvassing is really effective. Postcards are as well. I want you to do all those things, but I hope everybody gets to the point. If they can, go try it. You can do it. I know you can. The other things folks need to do or can do, create create events, bring people to your home, have coffee, um, talk to them small, about- Small groups in living rooms are actually very, very effective. Yes, I do agree with that as yeah. wholeheartedly. Bring people together, find out what they want to do, and then we'll go figure it out. Then go figure out how to do it. There's no one way to do it, but um, just know step, you know, step in. You can do it. I didn't know how to do this. All I ever used to say to people, I want to flip Virginia blue. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I, I learned as I went along. And it, it's a muscle to do this. And the more you do it, the better you'll be. And um, the only other big tip, always bring your phone when you're or organizing. Also, maybe a notepad and write everybody's name down. You get so excited that you're there. You want to stay in touch with those folks. And that's those are Barb's organizing tidbits for everybody. And I um, thank you for allowing me to share. And I'm going to pass social media over to Candy. So There's before so much overlap, um, awesome, Barb. So Candy, before you start, Barb, um, if you will please put a brief uh, list together with all the organizations that you mentioned that we can work with. And would you send it to me and I'll disseminate it to all the ladies in the groups. I appreciate that. I all right, Candy. Will. Thank you. All right, Candy, you're up. Awesome. Well, that was, um, I'm really glad that Barb, you and I are speaking together tonight because there's so much overlap between um, sort of our areas of expertise. And I think the, the one thing that I was taking a lot of notes when you talked and you talked about how, you know, it's so important that nobody feels alone in this work. And what's interesting, I also love canvassing. And it's so funny because, you know, one of the things that a lot of people don't know about canvassing, this is just a side note, is that you're usually going to a pretty friendly audience, right? We're not getting these lists of hard right Republicans that we're trying to convince. And I think that's what people imagine canvassing to be. And so, you know, we're getting lists of people typically that lean or are strong Dems. And so I've gone out to some areas, particularly rural areas, where people will answer the door and go, listen, I'm the only Democrat in my neighborhood. And I'll say, well, this list in front of me tells me otherwise. I've just been speaking to a lot of your neighbors. And we have to remember that most people in America um, are on the side of democracy, are on the side of freedom and protecting reproductive rights and common sense gun reform and all of those wonderful things, even though, especially if you're someone who spends a lot of time online, you may feel like you are in the minority um, for those beliefs, which you are not. And so the first reason why I love to encourage folks to use social media is because by putting your values and your ideas and your thoughts out there, you're helping other people um, recognize that they're not alone and it gives them bravery like barb you mentioned that too it helps other people feel brave enough to speak up so the first thing i would like anybody listening to do is i want to encourage you to think about what type of social media you enjoy consuming on a regular basis when you're trying to you know relax or unwind when you're sending your friends links or memes or videos what kinds of things are you sending typically uh that content that we enjoy is authentic in some way or relatable to us, right? It might be really specific to our experience. It's easy to digest. Uh, maybe there's humor, maybe it's serious, but when I send my friends links to stuff or Instagram reels or thread, you know, conversations, it's because I think that they're going to get something out of it. And so I encourage folks to, especially when I'm helping political candidates, or politicians with their social media is not to look at political social media for inspiration. Instead, look at whatever it is you like to consume, gardening content, cooking content, Olympic content and short videos, and think about why that resonates for you. And that's how you can think about your own social media account. Uh, social media is really a two-way communication channel. I always tell people we want to bring the social back to social media. It's a conversation. It's the new public square, right? People are going to social media to gather and get information. 
And so you are not posting just to shout into the void. You're posting to start conversations. You're posting to inform people. And I know that for a lot of us, it seems like social media is just a place where people fight, you know, where your cousin's husband and the woman you went to high school with come out of the woodwork and criticize, you know, your political post. But that is not how it has to be. And it's really um, the conversations that happen outside of your comments that are most important, right? So people will comment and like or whatever, right? But I have found personally that there are people watching my social media that might watch it for months and months before they ever DM me and go, you know, I don't really agree with everything you post, but you really make me think. Or, hey, you, you might not remember we used to go to church together and some of my, you know, some of the thoughts you posted are the same as mine. Those conversations that then lead to offline conversations that then lead to real life conversations are the goal, right? So I think it's important to sort of start this conversation with a few facts. So let's talk about the different social media channels that we're all on. There, there may be some, I may be about to say some things that will surprise you. So Facebook, Facebook is 57% male users in the age of 35 to 55 years old. Instagram is 55% female. The target age range there is about 25 to 34 years old. TikTok is 60% female. The average age is between 16 and 34. And X is 63% male. The average age of a user is 25 to 34 years old. Most of the country is on social media. And social media is not just TikTok dances. It's not just fighting with people on X, formerly Twitter. It's where we go to organize and, you know, our kids' school stuff is. And, you know, everybody in, in America has a connection to some form of social media. And so it's important to structure our message accordingly, right? So I think if you're like me and you're on more than one social media channel, you have sort of different pockets of people, you're using it for slightly different things. So the first thing I would encourage you to do is remember what channel you're on. Different types of content works differently on types of so different types of social media. So, you know, the place to put links to articles directly in a caption would be like in a Facebook, right? That's where you can be in groups like the group that we all met in. Um, and that's where you can share some of that longer form content. Places like Instagram, or it's better for short snippets, little videos, because it's, it's prioritizing video content. And of course, we know that X threads is where you put, you know, again, like you sort of short hit thoughts. So you want to make sure that you're sort of um, customizing your content. I also want to let you know that as of February, there's been a huge change across meta social media tools. So Meta came out in February and said, listen, there's too much misinformation and disinformation on social media. So they have decided to throttle political content, which means that if you are somebody who posts a lot about, like you're a content creator who posts a lot about politics and current events, that your account is not being shown to new users, which is how we grow our accounts in the same way that it used to be. Similarly, if you're someone who posts it to your friends and maybe you post pictures of your pets and your kids and everyday stuff and you decide to start posting about social media, you can expect that the algorithm is not going to push that content out the way that it normally does to the people that are following. So you might not have as many views. So that's made it really hard for uh, organizations, for people running for office, uh, because for a variety of reasons, in addition to what I just mentioned, their content is just not getting the engagement that it used to get. And unfortunately, that really has not halted the spread of myth and disinformation. It's just made it harder for people to get good information and good political content. So we're kind of fighting an uphill battle whenever we post about current events. So the very first thing that I can tell you is if you want to do something easy from home, from your phone to help your favorite candidates, follow them like their content, and comment on their social media. If you look at, like, the Kamala HQ accounts and lots of these other, you know, really large accounts, um, they're getting flooded with a lot of negative comments. The trolls have come out of the woodwork. And so the more that we are commenting positively and even just liking their posts, 
the better that is. So that's a really easy action that you can take today. Um, but, you know, we also want to talk about how we can use our own social media channel and how you can start posting in a way that's informative. And the, the first thing I would tell you is um, to just tell a story and to make it personal. Right now, I think we're so inundated with a lot of slick overly produced videos. There's a lot of influencers that sort of are living this false life, trying to sell us something. Um, when really most people are on social media because they want to see pictures of their friends and they want to know what everybody's eating for dinner and up to on the weekend. So lean into that sort of authentic, relatable type of a post and make it personal. So I can share an example. Um, Within the, the Facebook group that we're all a part of, um, I posted recently, like, hey, here's something I posted on my own social media, and I encourage you to share this, but don't just copy and paste it. Do it in a way that represents your story and resonates with your friends. So I posted about how Project 2025 has a piece in there about how a Republican administration would make it harder to get 30-year mortgages. So a lot of my friends right now are trying to buy homes, they have a crazy, there's a crazy housing market right now, it's really stressful. Um, and so that is of interest to my peers. Like why, who would make it harder to get a 30 year mortgage? What would that accomplish? And so I simply posted the link to Project 2025, a couple of screenshots. And I just said like, I am voting to, for anybody who's gonna fight against Project 2025 because I think that this is wrong and here's why. I made it really personal just to myself and I got a lot of really positive feedback from my friends who said things like, I didn't know what Project 2025 was, or I've heard about it, but I thought it was about reproductive rights only. I didn't really understand. Um, you know, I, like most of you here, live in Northern Virginia. We have a large federal workforce. And a lot of my friends who work for the government don't understand what is in their future if Project 2025 comes to pass. And those are the types of things that we need to be posting about. Um, because those resonate with people. And so the woman you went to high school with who says she's not political, but who follows you, that might be the one and only time she's hearing about that topic. So, you know, using social media effectively is a way to do what I think we all probably want to do, which is become that go-to person in our friend circle. When people say, hey, listen, like, I'm really embarrassed, but do we have an election coming up? You know, because in Virginia, we have an election every year. Or is school board something you elect? Um, I I know that I need to vote, but I don't know how to check if I'm registered. Or, hey, what is this early voting thing all about? Or, hey, can I get a yard sign? Or, I think I want to send postcards, right? You want to be that go-to person in your circle of friends where they know that they can go to you for just you know, non-judgmental facts and information. And so if that's something that you want to do, you can start posting on your social media really basic stuff like when early voting starts, where early voting happens. So look for those really informational posts, or if you're creative, you can make your own informational posts. You know, Canva is a great tool. There's a free um, Canva resource, and you can go and you can make like really good looking posts that are going to be useful to your friends and family with information that they want to know. Um, I would also say to always include a call to action. So if you're, even if you're just posting something casual on Facebook, like, you know, a link to an article, right? Okay, that's fine. It's the first step. But you could say, hey, this article really took me by surprise. I didn't know that. Um, I didn't know what Vice President Harris's job regarding the border really was, and I'm seeing a lot of misinformation about that. So read this article and DM me if you have more questions. Make sure whenever you're doing some kind of political action, you're taking a picture, you're sharing it to your social media. Like, hey, I went to this great, I, I watched this great Zoom recording, and, um, you know, I'd love for you to sign up for the next one, and then we can, we can do it together from my living room. You know, always put in some sort of a call to action for people. Um, I do a lot of political activism with my kids in tow, and I always make sure to tell my friends and to share that because a lot of people don't realize that there's a lot of sort of civic engagement you can do with young kids. And I have had so many friends say, oh my gosh, I can't believe that you did X, Y, and Z. I didn't know kids could go to postcard parties. I didn't know you could canvas with your kids. I'm going to do that too. So now when I post, I say, hey, if this looks like it's something you're interested in, text me and we'll go together next time. So it's really about 
sharing sort of your your routine and what you're doing to further whatever causes you're interested in about being authentic and relatable. You do not have to be anybody but yourself. You can just share. You don't have to be an expert at any topic. You can simply say, this is a candidate that really represents me and she's running for school board and I'm voting for her and here's here's why. Or it could be as simple as, you know, early voting starts in two days. I'm going to go vote on the first day because it's really important to me to get my ballot in so that I can drive people to the polls on election day. Like whatever your thing is, just be authentic. It does not have to always be something controversial or that's going to be a hot topic or a hot take. In fact, people are kind of over all of that. So just share sort of what your daily life looks like. Make sure you include that call to action. Um, and remember to keep social media social. Finally, I know a lot of us are worried about boundaries and about getting sucked into, you know, those back and forth conversations. And I just want to remind everybody that our social media feeds are like our living room and other people's are like their living room, right? And you can control what happens in your space. So I would encourage you to, um, you know, block or to mute people whose social media posts cause you anxiety, and maybe you just want to do that through the election, right? You don't have to look at things. You don't have to consume content that is upsetting to you in in a way that's not productive, right? It's good for us to be challenged, but we don't need to be following people that consistently raise our blood pressure. Um, if folks are, you know, getting challenging you in your comments, and it's not a good faith conversation, you don't have to engage. Uh, you can simply ignore. You can block you can mute, whatever you need to do. Um, and it's, it's one of those things where you'll know if there's a productive conversation happening or not, but you can really avoid most of that in the first place by simply saying, hey, this is my opinion, here's some information for you, post it, and you know that's really all, all that you have to do. And if none of this sounds like something that you are interested in or you don't feel confident doing any of these things, go back to my first message, which is engage with other people's comments right? Engage with other people's posts. So if you see people that are being brave and they're posting their opinions or they're sharing information that you find useful, shoot them an encouraging DM, you know, um, like their posts, maybe leave a little heart comment. It can be really simple. Um, and that's a really good way to sort of get started with all of this. And I'll just leave you by saying that um, if this was helpful, you can follow my company, which is Politically Connect. We're most active on Instagram, but we help candidates and organizations. So if you are volunteering with an organization or with a candidate that needs to step up their social media game, uh, we're always available as a resource. We can help you with that. But you can also volunteer to help them with their social media. So if you like social media, if it's something you're interested in, maybe you do or don't want to spend a ton of time on your own social media, that is a job that is very, very, very much needed. And Pretty much every, um, you know, down ballot candidate could use somebody to help them with their social media, something you can do from home a few hours a week. And there is a huge need for that as well. Um, so that's another way that you can get involved. It isn't necessarily about posting on your own social. Um, so that's what I have for you all. I know some of you on, you know, on this call here use social media a lot. So I'm happy to answer any questions or get any of your feedback. But um, Barb, I know that you're a social media user and you have stepped up your personal social media game in the last few months. So good job. Thank you. Thank you so much, Candy. Um, yeah, I'm gonna thank turn you it so much. I'm great, great information. I took a page full of notes once again. And uh, I'm going to open it up to Soraya, Mary, Jamie to ask any questions they have. But before you ladies jump in, um, I just want to thank you two for being here and for pivoting after um, our mishap. So uh, we really appreciate that. Uh, Mary, we got a question um, in one of the posts about when we are actually uh, broadcasting. So I just explained that we broadcasted today because we were feeding off the momentum from our our county launch, our county launch yesterday. So I'm sure we'll get that question uh, some more. So do you ladies have any questions for Candy or Barb? Candy, you're muted.
Mary, you on? Yeah. I could actually ask some questions that were asked of me um, from within the group. Uh, the question always comes up about what, how to engage on their on their page, um, and the best way of. Um, putting stuff out there because they 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 some of their friends are you know with 45 and so they don't want to get into confrontation with them so is there a good and I, I know you mentioned um kind of like telling a story but they're trying to really talk about um project 2025 so is it taking a piece of what they're trying to tear down and make that more personable and more appealing to who's actually going to be reading it um, as opposed to just taking a, uh, a, a news article or a picture with words on it that has facts and figures, but um, instead of putting that stuff out there, kind of make it just more personable. Yeah, I, there's a few things that you can do. So the first um, is just sort of tactically, you know, you don't have to share every post with everybody. So if you're on Instagram, you can cultivate what's called a close friends list, where if you post stuff in your stories, only the people that you have chosen to share it with will see it. Um, Facebook has some similar tools and you can, at post to post, you can choose people to not see that post of yours. And so I think that we are all understand that very, very unlikely we're going to change anybody's minds with a social media post. So if you have someone in your life, you know, who is a rabid Trumper, um, who probably isn't going to do anything with that information, you can certainly keep them from seeing it. So that was the first thing. Sometimes our groups that we're in are safer places to share information um, as well. But if you decide that you want to share something, you know, sort of to all of your friends, all of your followers, then I would think about sort of the basic rules of persuasion that we use anywhere else, right? It's really hard to debate with someone's feelings or, you know, observations about their own life. So, for example, I've seen some really effective posts from people that say, you know, the religious tradition that I'm a part of teaches me you know, generosity to the stranger or whatever. Um, and so I am voting for so-and-so because my faith teaches me that that's a really important issue. And here's an article that shares a little bit more about that, right? Certainly people can come out and disagree with you. But you're just sharing your feelings and how your personal values are impacting your voting. So that's sort of what I mean. You mentioned storytelling. And yes, that's, that's sort of what I mean. You can also say things like, um, you know, for, um, you know, something that's really important to me is my kids uh, having access to, you know, books in the library, or that all of the kids in my region, in my county, have access to really great, really strong public schools. And so I am voting for this person. And again, people certainly can come back to you and they can debate whether, you know, you're taking the right course of action, but you don't have to engage with those. And I think that we need to be brave sometimes in sharing our opinion, because you'll also get people that are your friends and your followers chiming in and going like, I feel exactly the same way. And those comments typically will outweigh the negative ones, two or three to one. I'll tell you a little secret. Sometimes if I'm hosting something that I'm like, I really want to share this, but like I'm a little nervous, I'll text my like-minded friends and be like, can you comment positively on my post? And they'll do it. And then the first comments that pop up are, are supportive ones. And people are a lot less likely to wade into those waters with their nasty comments when I already have some positive posts, you know, some positive comments on my post. So that's just a little trick that I like to use. So I just want to stop you right there, Candy, because what you just said about having friends put positive quotes or, or messages on your uh, social media posts absolutely works because I have one of my, my day job, I'm a recruiter and one of our partners 
does that all the time. And uh, because we, they have to ask for community input, but sometimes someone just wants to just keep putting negative thoughts and, and, and uh, comments on there. So she'll email a bunch of us and say, Hey, can you go counteract these, this guy who's on there saying so-and-so, but it does work. So I like that. Another thing I've seen be effective that V does and Mary does is that they tag four or five of us who they know are going to be positive in the post itself, knowing that I, if you tag me, I'm going to see it. I'm going to come and comment on that post because they know it's something that I'm going to find exciting enough and be enthusiastic enough to want to respond to. So I think that's another technique that can work. And plus, then I see the post and I start out my morning because I'm on the West Coast three hours later, seeing some really positive, exciting information. Uh, to add to that, Jamie, do you have any particular questions for Barb or Candy? I think one of the things that folks might want to think about is in these times when things are so divided, I know sometimes folks are worried about how our posts could be seen at work and how protected that is and how delicate do we need? Do we need to be worried about doxing? You mentioned in the Northern Virginia area, a lot of folks are feds. Those feds are covered by the Hatch Act. Any feds who are watching, if you don't know about the Hatch Act, please look that up, understand what your rights and responsibilities are under Hatch. But for those of us who work in the private sector, are, do you have any advice? Because as we're using our social media, I mean, anything can be screenshotted at any time. There's no such thing as privacy on the internet. And I apologize, I'm outside and apparently there's a lot of traffic here. <laughs> Hey, we can hear you. Uh, yeah, that's an excellent, excellent point. And uh, I think the first thing to remember is absolutely right. Even in these private groups that we're a part of, we have to assume that it is not private and that information will be shared. So we certainly have to use um, discretion about what we're posting and think about sort of the, the risks versus the reward. So yes to everything you said about the Hatch Act, yes to making sure that you're following your employer's um, sort of rules and regulations. And you know, there's, there's certainly something to be said for making sure that you follow all the typical internet rules of safety. So for example, when I'm in an, an event, I typically do not post until I get home. If I'm doing something with my kids, I don't post their faces, right? So all of those rules, still very much apply. Um, and so you do have to be smart about it. So that's why, um, and, and remember that the things that you like on social media are also not private, right? Everybody can see the things that you're liking, the things that you're following, right? Even if you're not posting. So that's really important to remember. And if you are someone who, for whatever reason, maybe you own a small business and you feel like you cannot speak out, maybe it's because of your job, you know, whatever reason, there's lots of things behind the scenes that you can do even if social media is your thing, to help out, again, candidates and organizations. Um, and I think that's important to remember as well. The final thing I'll say about that is um, I am a small business owner and we, I had to talk to, you know, in addition to the work that I do in the political world, I have another business and my business partner and I had to sit down and have a conversation about, do we want to share our values on our professional social media? And ultimately, we did decide to do that because it helps us attract like-minded clients and it deters those that are not like-minded. Um, and so there is a benefit to that. But I would say certainly for the entrepreneurs that are listening, that's a conversation you need to have with all of your stakeholders about whether or not um, you want to do that on your, on your professional pages as well. So lots of things to think about and it's very unique to everyone. Awesome. Soraya, do you have any questions for Barb or Candy as we wrap up? I do. I have one question. Uh, I have one question and it is for both Candy and Barbara. Um, if I am a, a college student and I want to get involved, whether I actively go to school in the, you know, the state where I'm a, a resident um, at or not, what are some things that I could do? Barb, why don't you go ahead and then I'll jump in. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm already seeing um, organizations, like if you're um, Planned Parenthood has community organizers, which is fabulous to organize, um, voter registration, helping, this is going to sound like a really basic thing, but a lot of young people don't know how to 
fill out like an absentee ballot and, and mail. I'm not being derogatory to you, but I know my daughter didn't know how to do that. She said, this is so hard because she's so, are you, la are you agreeing with me or no? Are you laughing? Yeah, I, I am agreeing. Yes. <laughs> so I, not too long ago. Correct. So that sounds very basic. And even today I was talking to um, a 19 year old, a friend of mine and his, cause I was standing there. The mom said, you're going to vote, right? You know, in front with poor kid, what's he going to say? Yes, I'm going to vote. He goes, but I don't know how to do it. So I, I don't want to cut you off, but I do want to interject yeah. here from what happened in Washington state. We are a mail-in voting only state. Yeah. So, and it is, it is confusing. So if you've got a young voter uh, with my 18 year old one, his, his first election, and even the second and third time he's filled out a ballot, he had questions to your point, Barb. It isn't, it isn't just the absentee ballot. If you are in a mailing voting state like Washington, they may need help as well. So make, you know, make a safe space, you know, to do that. Um, those are the things I, I can think about, I think about, but there should be, there's STEM clubs. You can start your own grassroots. You can do your own in, in your spare time, but you're at college, I know. But, um, you know, the things that are important to you, you know, that that's an exciting time to be at school with folks that you're living with, that you're in close proximity to, um, talk to them how excited you are and um, advocacy organizations can help you, you know, to, to get out the vote and to, for the things that you care about. Thanks so for the question. I, I yeah, would actually, question. I will actually recommend that uh, kids on college campuses um, get involved with campus, specifically campus orgs, and mm -hmm. if they are members of fraternities and sororities on campus, those organizations are deeply involved in the community and uh, uh, big things like voting and representation and all of that. So I would recommend they chime in to a group where they feel safe, like Barb said, and, and just join. Candy? Yeah, that's a that's a great point. And those campus organizations also often need somebody to run or to manage their social media. Um, something that I will say is that it, you know, a lot of times people just assume that if you're young, that you are really social media literate or savvy. And oftentimes that's true. But we've also sort of seen the pendulum swing the other way, where a lot of younger people just are like inundated and trying to disconnect from their phones a little bit. Um, so that might not be the case, right? So there might be organizations that really could use to understand social media as well. And if you are somebody who understands how to use it and likes using it, explaining it to some of the folks in your life who may mm -hmm. not be a social media literate is really, really helpful. Um, I would also say that, you know, it, as you're just messaging with your friends and you're sending each other TikToks and doing all the things that we all do, you know, try to balance out the content that you're sharing with your sort of friend group and throw in some more serious stuff or some educational informational stuff. And then, of course, post things like that to your own social media channels, I think are really important. And then from a professional standpoint, I would say as somebody who's, you know, been in the social media profession since social media became a thing, um, if it's something that you enjoy, I would encourage you to learn sort of the back end of it the metrics and learning how to sort of read all the analytics of, you know, sort of the back end of social media. That is a super valuable skill. A lot of people coming into the workforce now and even into volunteer organizations know how to post. What they don't know how to do is to analyze how well certain posts are performing, how to boost them, how to sort of hack the algorithm to make sure that they perform well. And if you're interested at all in social media, that is a very valuable set of skills that every campaign needs, every organization needs, every employer needs. Um, a lot of times that they don't know that they need that, but they certainly do. So if you're interested in that, that's something that is really worth learning if you ever think you may want to do any sort of social media management, even from a volunteer perspective. I just Googled what you can do on campus because it's been, it's been a minute, but there's a lot of um, something called voter friendly campuses to increase voter engagement with um, the uh, the government classes, like the, the, the professors there join with the campus and the student to do initiatives. 
So there are things to do as well. So brings everybody together. All righty. Um, do you ladies have any parting comments before we sign off here? Um, Candy and Barb, thank you so much for joining us this evening. This was a great conversation. We're going to be posting this to uh, my YouTube channel, and then we'll say uh, we'll share it out, and then hopefully we can post it to our social media's accounts and to the groups as well. Uh, any parting uh, parting thoughts? People can reach out to me at bjones.actact at gmail.com. I'm happy to mentor. I'm happy to lift up whatever you need. Uh, I can find an answer for you. I'll, I'll make it happen. Awesome. Thank you, Barb. Andy? I will say that, Barb, absolutely, that is true. What she's saying is true. And I am really grateful for friendship with people like Barb and my new friendship with people like you. One of the biggest blessings for me of activism has been that I have relationships and friendships with people that are sort of all different ages, all different backgrounds. Um, and, and I think that sometimes we, you know, even though I work in social media, I think um, where some of us that are like coming up as activists sort of what we don't recognize is that there's a lot of institutional knowledge and the cross-generational friendships that I've made and the cross-cultural and cross-economic division relationships that I've made are some of the most wonderful things that have come out of activism for me. And that's what keeps me fueled and motivates me. And it, I would just encourage anybody who's thinking about this to consider what Barb said, like what lights you up? What's fun for you? This is supposed to be a lifelong sort of... Um, it's a lifestyle. Activism is a lifestyle. And so we have to find a way to make it sustainable and enjoyable. And part of that is our friends and our community that we make along the way. So I just encourage anybody who is feeling a little disconnected, a little lonely, this is a way to plug in and it's incredibly rewarding. Uh, Soraya, Mary, Jamie, any parting remarks? We have a hundred days left before the election. And it, I know as, as invigorated as we feel about Kamala, we have to take this down ballot. So 100 days, ladies, 100 days. Hope we all understand the assignment. Awesome. Mary? No, I was saying it's gonna be a long 100 days. It's gonna fly by, watch. <laughs> it's gonna fly by. Sarai, you got anything? No, just to get out and vote. And there's uh, obviously we've heard here that there's plenty of opportunities for you to um, kind of play your part. And um, Barbara, Candy, correct me if I'm wrong, but you don't have to be 100% knowledgeable in in you know the candidate that you are intending to support to be able to participate participate. Excuse me as well. So don't let that be a hindrance for you to kind of get out there and knock on some doors or send out a few text messages. Postcards, texting, Gen Z. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. Hang Ladies, with her mother thanks. too much. Um, yeah. There is one other thing I wanted to say. Um, and uh, you guys can hear me, right? Yes. Um, is that we have to remember because we're getting... And I'm not going to say distracted, but we're overly consumed as we should be with the presidential election, obviously. But there are certain states that have other elections that are mm -hmm. going on that are just as important because we can get Kamala Harris into the White House. We can do it. And I know we can. But we're going to have to send that support with her, too. So that's very, very important. Because we can get her in there and they can fight her every step of the way. Or we can get her in there and she has some some support. Absolutely. And let's end on that high note, ladies. Like once again, thank you so much. Uh, folks that are watching this, this is uh, uh, this is Ladies GOTV, which has been recorded, and we will share it out to you all, so you'll be watching the replay. Uh, send us your comments, send us your questions. 
We'll do our best to get them answered. And we will see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>